Hey everybody, Tall Family Films here. I had an oil leak happening in my MDX, so I just want to show you what was going on here. So there's a lot of excess oil right here on the bottom of the transmission case. So you can see all those yellow areas. And then also on the oil pan itself, saw a lot of extra oil dripping there too. So I had my suspicions about this, and I'm going to try to do this in two parts. This will be part one. You can search my channel. If I don't get part two up there, I can give you the hint that I think it's the cam plugs. There's one in the front of the engine and one in the back. But here's this issue. So this is the oil filter housing. Those are 12 millimeter bolts. This thing's also called the VTAC or the variable timing something. It has lots of different names. Um, but on the 2012 Acura MDX, it sits right under the passenger wheel well, and it's visible without removing anything except for the wheel itself. So we're going to do that in this video. You can see the oil dripping out here. And this would de this would definitely be directly responsible for the oil that is collecting on the oil pan. I don't know if it could make it all the way over to the transmission case, but I do know this is a problem. So the first thing we need to do is drain the oil out of the car because we are essentially going to take off the oil filter except it's the housing itself not the filter. In this video I'm not actually going to remove the filter because I didn't have a filter a new filter to put on there and I'm due for an oil change in a month anyways. So I'm backing out these three 12, 12 millimeter bolts and We'll see this a couple of times in this video. These bolts are not the same size. That's unfortunate, but it's easy to keep track of. And I've got several notations in here to help you keep track of that. Two of them are the same size. One of them's not. Okay, you can do this with a regular ratchet and 12 millimeter socket. I'm just taking the easy way out. So I would not suggest you take all three of them off right away because there is, oh here, here you go. So you can see the bolts are not the same size. That top right one is the longer one. So the reason I'm not taking the third bolt out is because there are there is some electronics on this. So this this is the oil switch right here. This could be the oil sender. There's a sender and a switch. The sender's on the other side. Um, the switch is what tells you that you're out of oil, like an alarm. The sender is what tells the oil level, which I don't know if this car actually has an oil level, so I'm not sure why it has a sender. But anyways, maybe one of them is a VTEC switch and one of them is the regular switch. Um, but this one, the second one, which is on the right side when you're looking in, was a little bit harder to get off. So I had to change positions, reach up in there, and pull that one off. So you can see this, that, that one right there. Okay, so that one's a little bit tough to get to. And what I realized is you need to take the black piece off first and then push the green connector to separate the two. Now, I staged that, obviously, it didn't just fall apart like that. I set it up so that I wouldn't, uh, so I'd be able to film it for you. All right, so now we have all three bolts out. And, and there's the longer bolt, again, goes in the upper right. And now you can just sort of grab the oil filter and pull the whole thing forward. And some oil will come out, even if you've drained the oil just like when you take the oil filter off. All right, so here it is. And this is the main gasket that we're, that attaches to the uh, engine block. There's also, these are the switches, the switch and the sender that we talked about earlier. There's an O-ring under each one of those. And there's another gasket in here that we're gonna go after in just a second. But while I have this whole thing out, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this housing up, I would suggest you use brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner or something like that. And these are the O-rings. So these are the part numbers for the O-rings. 
I'm going to try to put this in the description if I remember. This is the same part, it's just in a different bag, don't know why. And those go um, under the switch and the sender. And then here's the main gasket, of course, that attaches to the block. So getting these things out, you'll need a pick. I mean, you could do it with something else, like a little flathead screwdriver, but... And oil will continue to kind of ooze out of this um, VTEC housing. And in my case, the filters that came off, they were still flexible, but it's like they were firm or something. They, they didn't have um, real flexibility like the replacement filters did. It's also a little bit of crap that the screen had caught, so I guess that's why the screen's there. All right, putting this uh, gasket in is pretty simple. Right? Clearly it won't go in wrong. And you just press it in. You just press in all of the the maze of gasket that goes around the thing and make sure it's all in there like it should be. As long as you get it mostly incorrect, then when it goes onto the engine block, it will seal itself correctly. Okay, so there's one other gasket that we haven't discussed up to this point and it's on the very top of the unit. It's covered by two 10 millimeter bolts. This gasket is called a spool valve gasket. And you want to clean uh, both sides. As we take all of these things off, you'll notice I clean both sides. Here's the part number for it. Kind of looks like a snowman. And putting it back in, um, it, it will only go on one way. Oh, you want to make sure that this um, spring-loaded mechanism actually works. As you press it up and down, it should move very freely, and it should remain in the upward position. If it does not, then you're going to want to clean that with some brake cleaner or something until it does. All right, so you need three hands to kind of situate this to put it back on. As you notice, I'm trying to do. Um, if I could go back and do this over again, the one thing I would do is I would research the torque specs for each of these bolts. I used the German spec, Gutentite, um, where I just kind of snugged everything on. I would estimate that these uh, needed probably, I'm at, I, what I put on them was probably about 10 foot-pounds, maybe 12. I read a spec that said 9. Certainly did not overdo it because the housing is all aluminum. Okay, so now to do the O-rings. They are two different sizes. One's a 24, one's a 22. First, we'll tackle the 24. It did take a little bit of force to get this loose. Um, I don't know if that's because this thing was laying on a bench, and so it was a little bit harder to you know, get it to break free, or if they were in there that tight. I also noticed when I took these off that this could have been the source of the leak either one of these. Both of these showed signs that oil may have been escaping. So here's the O-ring. And here's the part that we're going to put in there. Again, these are the same for both O-rings.
just cleaning out a little extra oil. There's, um, you'll find other videos where people swear that you need to coat these gaskets with oil before you put them in. There was enough oil in here where these things did get oil before I put them in, but I wasn't purposely doing that. Um, I just, sometimes I do on certain ones, sometimes I don't, and I just felt like I had a good seal on these, so I didn't pursue that. And I would say on these, because I was using a breaker bar, I was probably closer to the 16 foot pound range, tightening these back up. This is the 22 millimeter. And on this one, the O-ring stuck to the stem. You do not want to put it back on the stem. If yours comes out with the stem, you do not want to do that. You want it to go inside the housing. Otherwise, you would have a hard time getting it lined up to be perfect, and um, that would be a definite source of a leak. Okay, so now we are completely uh, ready to go. All gaskets have been replaced. Let's go put it back on the car. Again, we're going to clean off the mating surface of the block where it's going to attach. Just like we did on all the other gaskets, we want to do the same thing here. You can clean all of this stuff with brake cleaner or carburetor, choke cleaner, throttle body cleaner, all of those things. Um, but if you uh, if it's fresh enough like this one was all of the oil just came right off with a paper towel the easiest bolt to get back in it's kind of to hold it in place is in the upper left corner we'll say that the 10 o'clock position and then the bottom right at five o'clock remember the upper right takes the longer bolt All right, so we want to sort of go in a round robin fashion as we tighten these. We don't want to go too tight on any one bolt without doing all of the bolts. So you'll see me moving around and around and around, and I'm tightening these slowly um, as I go around to make sure that I don't bind any one side. All right, so now we got to hook the electronics back up. These things won't go on the wrong plug, so they're keyed, so you can't get them on wrong. And then that wire piece, we need to put it back on. So in this case, it would be better for you to put the black piece back onto the car first. There's a clip for it, and then snapping the green piece right back into the black piece. All right, let's start it up. Make sure we don't have any oil oozing out. All right, it looks pretty good in here. I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything up. And the reason I'm doing this is because in a couple of hours I wanna check it, in a couple of days I wanna check it, in a couple of weeks I wanna check it. And I wanna see if any oil has accumulated or oozed back out. So I'm getting this to be as absolutely clean as I can possibly get it in here. And I would suggest you do the same. And I would definitely suggest you check on it and keep checking your oil level as well. And here's all the gaskets that we replaced. And I hope this video has helped you. You can certainly help others find it by subscribing to my channel and giving this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thanks.